Good day. Welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Fidelia Aguncha. At least five policemen sustained injuries in a suicide bomb attack in the Mona area of Maiduguri capital of Borno state. The attacks happened less than 24 hours after President Muhammad Buhari presided over a security meeting where he ordered service chiefs to tackle security threats in the northeast region of the country and other parts of the nation. A police source who confirmed the attack said another terrorist was also killed as he attempted to detonate his vest. Officials of the Borno State Emergency Management Agency and other security agencies arrived the same moment after the attack. The injured have now been taken to the state hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, in a separate attack, six people have been confirmed dead after Boko Haram militants attacked a village in Borno State, northeast Nigeria. The attacks occurred into Ibrahim Liman, the head of a local anti-jihadist militia force, is a suspected reprisal attack after members of the village handed over some Boko Haram militants to the Nigerian army. It happened on Tuesday evening at the Ki. Jimatari, a village in northeast region of the state. The chief of the village was among the victims and it was clear that the victims were deliberately targeted by the sect. Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari has received the report on the probe of Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Baba Chela Wao, and Ayo Oke, Director General of the National Intelligence Agency. Lawal is under investigation following allegations of violation of law and due process in the award of contracts under the presidential initiative of the Northeast, while OK is being probed after claiming that the 13 billion naira recovered by the EFCC in, in an Ikoi apartment belongs to his agency. Subsequently, both men were suspended by the president pending report from the investigation. Nigerian youth need to imbibe the spirit of entrepreneurship to fight unemployment and solve the poverty among Nigerians. This was the submission of speakers at an economic empowerment conference held in Lagos State's tag recession. Hundreds of youth in this hall, most of them jobless, are here for one purpose, to listen and learn from successful entrepreneurs on how to succeed in a recession. But succeeding is not just the challenge faced by many of these youth. A good number of them are equally jobless and need something doing before they can succeed. Entrepreneurship, according to these speakers, is the way out. You don't need to stand up for your convictions, your deep convictions in times of recession. You've got to be able to take responsibility for your decisions. You've got to be able to fight and conquer your fear. Take that. Great meetings don't make men. It's great decisions. On your own, you have to try your best right now. Buckle up. Reset your mind. There is no limit to where you can get to. You're already destined to prosper and go forward. A lot of young people today, their priorities is the phone that they carry. They carry such expensive phones. And yet, there's no data inside the phone. And then the little money that they have, they use it to buy data. To do what? To pick. They pick that bay. The bay will pick the guy. Guy, please send me credit. Is that what your priorities are? Are those the things you need to focus on? In a recession? Or perhaps you need to begin to think about that phone that you are carrying. Of what use can that phone be to me? What can I produce with this phone? Just phone. Entrepreneurship is discipline. And there are not enough people who have the discipline of entrepreneurship. And so, my expectation is that you will provide us that demographic dividend that Nigeria is looking for from its youth bulge. Because you have become a disciplined people and can become entrepreneurs, what the youth bulge can give us may actually be a great demographic dividend. Find value where others have been too busy finding themselves. Add value there and make a mark for yourself in such a way that no one can dislodge you. You can only continue to grow and increase. You need to up your game, raise your standard, and get into conformity with what is acceptable, what is the norm in the world. So don't let us shy away from growing up from developing ourselves, from reinventing and repositioning ourselves.
Former CBN governor Charles Soludo, however, shocked the audience when he said Nigerians should be prepared for another recession after the current one elapsed. In your lifetime, I believe God will bless you with long life. You will witness many more recessions. This won't be the last one. Eh? You think we're just struggling to get out of this? You must be preparing for the next uh, one. Because there will, surely, it's a cyclical thing, trend. What is permanent in life is change. Every year, about 3 million new people enter the labor market in Nigeria. And only about 300,000 or 10% will get a job. Now, the question is, how will you survive and prosper? Speakers here agreed that inconsistent government policies, insecurity, infrastructural deficiency, all contributed to the challenges faced by entrepreneurs, but advised Nigerians to be resolute, determined, and upright to be successful in life. Tunji Ola TV 360, Lagos. Nigeria's Federation Account Allocation Committee has distributed the sum of 467.8 billion naira to the three tiers of government, that is federal, state and local councils, being allocation for the month of July. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance, Mahmoud Ishaduse, noted that there was significant increase in the export volume by 1.2 million barrels, and this resulted in increased revenue from export sales by $62 million. After the cost of collections deducted was distributable is $77.312 billion, which is distributed as follows, according to the existing uh, revenue allocation formula. The federal government gets 11.59 billion, states 38.656 billion, and local governments 27.059. So adding all these sources together, together, we have a total distributable amount for the month of 467.852 billion, which um, compares uh, adversely to the 652.229 billion uh, distributed last, last month, but it's still a higher figure com compared to what was uh, distributed in um, July uh, for, for, for June collections. It's, it represents the second highest figure um, in the year from January. So um, it's, it's, it's still ref it, it reflects a positive increase compared to previous months if we take out some um, uh, the uh, distributions made in July. The various university branches of ASU are holding special meetings across the country over the ongoing strike. The lecturers will consider the latest offers by the Nigerian government aimed at reserving the issue. The union last week declared indefinite strike to protest non-implementation of agreements between the union and the federal government. Since the start of the strike, the union has met with the Nigerian government twice to reach an agreement. During the meeting, the federal government offered to pay 23 billion naira and a monthly payment of 1.5 billion naira, pending the outcome of the forensic audit being carried out by the Ministry of Finance. The International Criminal Court is considering hearing Serap's petition against former President Olusegun Obasanjo. Omar Musa Yaradua and Good Luck Jonathan. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project Serap in the petition was asking the ICC to investigate how the former government squandered over 11 trillion naira meant to provide regular electricity supply in the country. The court has now confirmed receipt of Serap's petition. Nigeria has donated 315 tons of assorted relief materials and $1 million cash to victims of the Sierra Leone mudslide. The death toll is currently at 499 with around 600 others still missing. The items presented by Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema, included bags of rice, beans, maize, sorghum, milk, spoons, plates, mattresses, blankets, roofing sheets, soaps, mosquito nets, and mats. Others were medical supplies such as anti-malaria drugs, antibiotics, and disinfectants. 
A group in Nigeria is calling on the nation's president, Muhammad Buhari, to embark on a radical change of his cabinet. The group, which is known as Buhari Friends Organization Network, says the president's cabinet is stopping him from fulfilling his electoral promises. The national coordinator of the group, St. Antonius Okun, says it is expedient that the president gets tough on members of his cabinet whom obviously are found wanting in the discharge of their duties. Mr. President himself is not unaware of the fact that certain appointees in government are not doing up to as it's supposed to be. This president believes in the uh, principle of uh, a square peg in a square hole, and we stand with that. So he believes in uh, service delivery, quality service delivery. So in the process, if you don't do your work well, it's expected you should hand up. We support that. We call on Mr. President, please, looking what any minister, any personal aid, any man, uh, chief executive of government agency that has not performed well. We call for, call for the removal of such person immediately because the people outside are even more, quite vibrant, better than even the people inside. The, in, the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. We're going to remain as one entity. Whoever doesn't like it should please have a rethink. We don't want Nigeria to divide. We are one, Ibo, Hausa, Yoruba, the ethnic minorities, we are all one, Nigeria. Nigeria should come before, first before any other thing, no tribe or religion. Nigeria should come before everyone's mind. First, it should be in Nigeria first. The Police Service Commission has approved the promotion of 6,455 senior police officers. 47 superintendents of police were elevated to chief superintendent and 498 deputy superintendents were promoted to the next rank of superintendent in the force. 5,907 inspectors were also promoted to the rank of assistant superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good uh, business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the furniture you, you, you brought was very perfect. <laughs> that's how we roll. <laughs> yeah. uh, then, let me do you uh, receipts. Yeah. How much of it again? Uh, uh, one million naira. Okay, right to 2.5. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The deal was uh, for one million naira. Now. Okay, right three million. I'll give you 500. Um, oh, no. I just do business like, <laughs> like that now. Oh. Yeah. Hey, in that case, give me back my check. Let me go and look for something that was business. Thank you. Your loss. It is only for incorruptible customers. What are you talking? Now get out. What, what, what kind of this? You will just die. No, 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 no. You will die. The that, that is the door. Now get out from here. Rubbish. Look, my people. Make me only add money for original invoice price. That's not corruption. Say no. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Glad to have you back. Now, Nigeria plans to raise 193.14 billion naira worth of treasury bills at an auction on August 30th. The CBN will offer 26.14 billion naira in three month paper, 62 billion naira in six month bill, and 105 billion naira in one year paper. The auction result will be announced on the same day. Now, Nigeria is planning to refinance $3 billion worth of treasury bills denominated in the local currency with dollar borrowing to lower cost and improve its debt position. Oil prices dropped on Wednesday as investors assessed mixed messages about Libya's oil supply. Libya was exempt from the organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries Agreement to curb crude output because of its oil industry had been damaged by civil strife. But an expected surge in the production in the North African country this summer has raised the question of whether the cartel should press Libya to cap production going forward. Angolans voted in a parliamentary election on Wednesday, expected to usher in the ruling party's defense minister as the first new leader of Africa's second biggest oil producer after 38 years. Joao Lorenzo, who has pledged to boost growth and fight corruption, would inherit an economy mirrored in recession as gapping inequality, soaring inflation and high unemployment squeeze poor Angolans who have benefited little 
from a decades-long oil boom. He will replace Jose dos Santos, who has been president of the country for over 38 years. At least eight people died and others were injured in Guinea when a portion of a rubbish landfill site collapsed on houses on the outskirts of the capital, Conakry. The government initially said five people had been killed and around 10 others injured. Now a senior police source later said that eight had died and a second official said the government was preparing to raise its death toll after finding three more bodies in the site. Super Eagles coach General Rowe has recalled Captain Mikael Obi, Victor Moses and Odion Egalo for the crucial World Cup qualifiers against Cameroon. The trio were absent in Nigeria's last match, which is a two-new loss to South Africa. Following that defeat, Rowe has promised changes and his 23-man squad for the Cameroon double has emphasized his point. Despite his poor performance at that game, Daniel Akpe has also been invited for the clash. The Eagles will take on the Cameroonians in Uyo on September 1st, with the second leg being played in Cameroon on September 4th. England record goal scorer Wayne Rooney has announced his retirement from international football. The former Manchester United captain announced his retirement in a statement released on Wednesday. He says the decision to retire from international football is based on his desire to further his club's career with Everton. Rooney made his England debut during a friendly match in, with Australia in 2003. He ended his international career with a record 53 goals in a record 119 matches. Cristiano Ronaldo says a decision by Spain's administrative sports court to uphold his five-game match ban for pushing a referee is incomprehensible. The court told AFP it had rejected a 32-year-old Real Madrid forward appeal after he was sent off in the 3-1 win against Barcelona in the Super Cup. He got a one-match ban for two yellow cards and a further four-match ban for pushing the referee after he was sent off the pitch. Well, that's all on news now. Thanks for watching. I am Fidelia Aguncha.